Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned before, November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and this morning we're getting into that inside your spotlight on Now. And in this morning's spotlights, we're talking spotlights we're talking diabetes and to do so with us this morning is dr chad bisambo who is an endocrinologist and also a diabetologist and listen world diabetes day will be celebrated the 14th of november that's this sunday and we definitely wanted to talk to you because we keep hearing that most of the people who are presenting with covid19 or dying from covid19 one of those comorbidities is diabetes so let's see if we can get you some kind of information to help you to safeguard yourselves. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Natalie. Nice, nice uh, to be on the show. Thanks for having Aww, me. Oh, <laughs> you're most welcome. Yeah, you look nice and fresh and ready, you man. You too, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Doc, you know, it's a simple question, but I think it's a question people should understand what diabetes is. Okay, well, that's a really good place to start. Um, so, so diabetes is a, is a condition where you have um, high glucose levels in your bloodstream. Um, what causes that process? Um, they, they, the major organ that is responsible for insulin, your pancreas, isn't working well in diabetes. Um, so there, there are two major types, um, type two, which accounts for about 90% of diabetes. It means that you, you may produce some insulin from your pancreas, but not enough to keep your blood sugar levels down to where it should be. Um, then less common is type one, uh, happens more in, in kids and you know through adolescent age. Um, where your pancreas produces absolutely no insulin at all and you uh, unfortunately you have to go on insulin treatment you know from diagnosis um, and what can you know cause diabetes to become worse would be you know I would say obesity being overweight lifestyle changes really yeah. you know so it can be risk factors to, to make you diabetic especially type 2 so um, those would be the, the major you know core causes of, of type diabetes you know if we yeah. understand what diabetes is and the things that we can do to safeguard ourselves why you think we have so many people with diabetes um, a really really good question um, so in in our population in Trinidad you know there's a uh, uh, there's Indo-Caribbean um, Afro-Caribbean um, so so just um just by just by that you know we are already at high risk um, then along along with, with poor eating habits, you know, um, it, it pushes our you know our population more into that diabetic range. Um, and then there's there's also adherence in, in you know following up for diabetes, taking medications as you should. So I think um, spreading education and awareness about diabetes is really important to, yeah. to help prevent this, you know. Yeah. But you yeah. don't think there's sufficient I believe there's sufficient education or information available yes, about yes. diabetes. It's one of the most talked about you know, chronic disease, if you want to call it that, or, or comorbidity. Yeah, it is. A lot of people know about diabetes, um, but when you actually, you see like patients in clinic and you speak to them more about details of diabetes, there is really difficult to, um, um, they, they may not always understand everything. So I, when I see patients, I always like to go through all the fine details mm -hmm. about, you know, what, what should you do in terms of eating, exercise, how much weight should you lose, um, what, a lot of people prescribe medication, but how does the medication work? What yeah. benefits does it have? What are the you know what are the side effects? So so I mean um, there is a lot of knowledge in the general public, but I think getting into the finer details as well um, yeah. is is important. You know right? Yeah. So what is it about diabetes that makes people who contract COVID nineteen mm. more prone to death? Yeah. So so um, so diabetes in itself um, it puts you at risk of infection, right? Um, as we know traditionally, bacterial infections. I don't think we have enough data as yet to say that diabetes puts you at risk of COVID, but since the start of the pandemic, we um, we um, you know gathering data around the world, we we know that diabetes, especially if uncontrolled, can put you at risk of more severe COVID infection, um, and, and and it is really intricate um, about you know the relationship between COVID and diabetes. Um, so so the COVID uh, virus um, it is thought to put you in a state of insulin resistance. And there is also some evidence now that it may actually damage the pancreas even more. Um, oh. and yeah, so, so, so I manage COVID patients as well, and I do see patients, even with well-controlled diabetes, once they contract the virus, their sugars tend to, to be very, very high out of control, even coming in with diabetic emergencies, like one called DKA. Um, so yes, the, it is a really complex balance between both of them, and we are you know, still trying to, to look at the data and see you know, 
yeah. um, have, but doc, get some more knowledge on it. Too. Look into your camera and let those patients know that if they're diabetic and they present with COVID, that it can make the diabetes worse, which makes them at risk for death. Yes, of course. So, yeah. so if you are diabetic um, and you do contract COVID, you know, um, you would be at risk of more severe COVID in, uh, you know, infections at some times. And as well, the COVID virus itself can make diabetes worse. So really important to, you know, manage your diabetes well. And also really important, you know, if you aren't vaccinated, you know, please do get vaccinated because of the majority of patients we see right now in hospitals are not vaccinated. So, right. yeah. So, Doc, we understand now at least the link between COVID and diabetes. Let's hope that this conversation, we know that sometimes you won't get to the mass, but if we can change even 10 people's minds, that's 10 people who we would have saved for this morning alone, right? But let's talk about this idea of a diabetes and when someone has diabetes, you know, what are the things that they can do to help themselves, to keep themselves healthy? And you spoke about you know, losing weight again, it, just as so we, we made the link between COVID and diabetes, what is it about the weight and the excessive weight, the, the, the obesity that makes diabetes more complicated? Yes, so, so, so weight is directly related to what we call insulin resistance. And, and simply oh. what that means is that the insulin produced by your pancreas isn't used well by the cells of your body. Um, so, so we know for a fact that getting rid of some of, of the, the, the weight helps insulin works better in your, in your system. So, so simple things, um, simple dietary changes, you know, if you like to drink too much soft drinks or eat cake, you know, drink water instead, you know, cut down a little bit. Um, if you like to eat very, very fatty food, you know, fries, fried chicken, you know, maybe cut down a bit on that as well. We always advise more vegetables, more, more grains such as oats, more leaner meat instead of, you know, fatty meat. Um, and we always recommend losing five to seven percent of, of your body weight. So simply, you know, if you are 200 pounds, maybe losing 10 pounds helps quite a lot with insulin resistance and, you mm -hmm. know, diabetic control, hypertensive control, cholesterol control, you know. So, so I would say um, lifestyle changes are, are really the cornerstone of, of diabetes management. Do we find that when we have diabetes, we're more exposed to other issues like the high cholesterol, or hypertension that you mentioned just now? Yes, yeah, so so um, so when, when you assess a diabetic patient, what you want to assess is their, their global risk of cardiovascular disease. So you must always address issues that can predispose them to cardiovascular disease, which includes high blood pressure and um, high cholesterol as well. So um, it is really important to look holistically at a patient rather than just looking at, is my yeah. sugar okay? You know, we need to, to do a complete thorough check in each consultation to determine, you know, what is my cardiovascular risk and how could we improve it? Do you think we have that here, though, where we get that kind of intrusiveness or that kind of in-depth look at our health? Because I'm telling you, sometimes, as somebody who's in the healthcare system, sometimes the things that you find out here be like, but look how long I've been complaining about this, though. And yes, you, you yes. get to the point where things are bad before it is addressed. So. Is there something we need to change in terms of patient care yeah. so that we can make things better? So, so I'm a, I, I would say I'm a big proponent of primary health care. Um, so I think all patients, um, no matter if you feel well or if you feel ill, I think having an annual checkup is, is, is reasonable, you know, whether it be by the health center, whether it be by a private GP or specialist. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel okay, um, type 2 diabetes especially can be asymptomatic. You may go for many years even even high blood pressure and high cholesterol, you wouldn't know unless you get checked, you know. So so my message would be, you know, even if you feel well, go get checked, you know. Don't wait until the last minute when you don't feel well to go to, to visit a specialist. So I think primary care is really, um, should be the focus. And, and then if primary care can't, you know, manage or handle, you know, the cases, certainly you can refer on to the specialist, such as myself, mm -hmm. and we may be able to add a bit more, you know, input to, to, to the cases, you know, so, yeah. yeah. So lose a little weight, uh, watch what you eat, stay away from the fatty foods because what you're trying to do is to keep your pancreas as healthy as possible. Of and course, if it's resisting that insulin, then it means your blood sugar level spikes. Yes. yes and that right. causes other complications. And that, yeah, in the long term especially, yeah. it can cause, uh, uh, you know, kidney damage, damage to the eyes, you know, 
heart attack, strokes, mm -hmm. uh, damage to the feet. Those um, kidneys, boy, who knew they were so delicate? Of course they are, of course they Doc, are. Doc, you should yeah. tell people about that, you know, because half the people I see in my dialysis center are people who are diabetic. Yes, yes, of course. So yeah, type 2 diabetes is one of the main, you know, causes of, of kidney disease and, you know, patients going on dialysis. So. So yes, again, um, you know, don't wait until you feel sick, you know, go yeah. get tested, go get screened. Even if you are young, you know, we are at risk. Um, so, so in order to prevent, you know, have, have an annual blood test, have an annual urine sample, and you know, prevention is better than cure, mm -hmm. you know? So detecting at, it early is better. Yeah. At what stage do you know if, you know what, I'm really at risk for getting renal failure or, you know, some other comorbidity? As a doc, how do mm -hmm. you measure that? Because you know, for us, we just watch the numbers. So our blood sugar level is, you know, 130. And we'll be like, okay, we're not so yeah. bad. Or, you know, it's under 60, kind of too low. We just watch the numbers. What's the range first in terms of how you measure your diabetes? And what do you, as the doctor, you know, do? Yeah, well, well, I do look at numbers as well, right? We all do. So, um, so what I like to do is not just, you know, look at a single blood sugar reading. I like to look at things over a period of time. So the HB1C. Yes, exactly. So, so what is the HB1C? So this is a, a simple blood test that can be done to determine what is your average blood sugar over two to three months before the blood test. Um, so it is measured in percentage. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I would say anything less than, you know, 6.5% would be ideal, but less than seven is fine. Um, so, so. Controlling your HbA1c um, is one of the uh, you know most important things in, in you know, preventing renal disease and eye disease and nerve damage, um, especially over time. Um, of course, keeping your blood pressure on the check would help with everything as well. Um, in diabetics, we would say um, maybe less than 140 or 90, but if you do have any trace of renal disease, you may want it a bit lower, like maybe less than 130 or 80, for example. Um, cholesterol as well, the bad cholesterol, LDL. Um, in diabetic pa patients, I would say probably less than, we you know there's arbitrary numbers, 100 um, is fine. Um, having it less than that, whether you need to go on a special drug to help that, you know, is, is also, you know, something that we need to look at, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, looking at things over time rather than just one point in time, I think is important. And that's the importance of having, you know, follow up and, you know, visits to your doctors and, you know, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely. And, you know, especially when it comes down to diabetes, I find that we take so much for granted. We just figure, you know, okay, if we get that number, we're okay. But I was asking as well, at what point do you as the doctor say, okay, this is not, this, this is in a danger zone. This is a, is that a level where I can see renal disease or eye, eye issues or nerve damage coming into play? Yeah, so, so well, as a doctor, you never want to see a patient in the danger zone. Yeah. Um, so, so yes, um, they, they are, there are many patients that come to me like, you know, blood sugars in the 300s, 400s over many years and haven't gotten it under control mm. as yet, you know. Um, but, you know, with, with the pandemic and, you know, with other things going on, there are a lot of people that, you know, can't visit doctors as they would. Um, but that shouldn't be an excuse, you know. I mean, um, we are here to help. Um, we would be happy to, to provide, you know, as much support to, to all patients, you know, whether it be through the primary care, secondary care, um, even the, the private, you know, facilities, you know. So I, I, never, I don't like to ever see patients in that danger zone, but um, we need to, to address things really, really yeah. thoroughly for reach that stage, you know, so. Yeah. Can we live a long, healthy, full life being diabetic, type 1 or 2? Of course, of course. Um, once you get things under control early and you are comfortable managing your diabetes and you know what to do, you know when to seek uh, you know, medical attention, I think a diabetic patient can live a full, healthy, normal life without mm -hmm. too much worry, you know? Basically, you need to get on top of your diabetes. Once you are comfortable with managing it, I think you would be fine, you know, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And we see a lot of times when people are diabetic, you'll be begging them to lose weight, right? But it wouldn't yeah. go. But the minute they learn of the diagnosis, I don't know if it's the weight falls away or if it's the diabetes that causes the weight to go. What happens? They'll be fine. They'll be fine. You'll be like, listen, you need to lose 10 pounds as a dog. Nothing happens. You're diabetic and they go from 100 pounds to 20. Mm. What, is, what is it that really happens? Is it psychological or is it something with the disease that makes people you know, drastically lose weight over time. Yeah, so, so we do see a lot of patients, once they hear, you know, diabetes, once it's mentioned, you know, they, they, they start to change things completely, you know. Um, I don't think you need to be too drastic about it. Simple minor changes, you know, would help. As we, as we spoke about diet, 
Mm-hmm. I, I also recommend, you know, exercise maybe 20, 30 minutes a day, you know, not every single day, maybe yeah. five days for the week, moderate intensity exercise, brisk walking, jogging, you know, if yeah. you're able to. Um, but there's no need to go on any, any special fad diets or anything. Simple, simple changes to your regular lifestyle would be, would be very helpful. Um, yes, and, and as you said, diabetes itself can, you know, and insulin resistant, they both go together, you know, so, so losing weight does help with diabetic control, but I don't think you need to be, you know, drastic at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think simple dietary changes, a bit of, you know, activity and a bit of weight loss is, is all that's needed in the initial phase, you know. So World Diabetes Day, how will it be commemorated this year? What's your, what are you all doing? Um, so, so I'm working with the uh, the Diabetes Association of Trinidad and Tobago, and we morning, we are, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we are we are putting on uh, at least at least um, in that association, we ha- we are putting on a webinar with different different specialists. You know, we do have di- dietitians, medical physicians, um, podiatrists. So, so we are commemorating it that way. Um, and um, I think, you know, at Tudor, it will be very, very useful, I think very educational, and hopefully we can, even if it's Diabetes Day, you know, um, any, uh, we are happy to spread diabetes awareness throughout the year, you know? Yeah. So, and, um, and, and, you know, just by coming on this show, I hope I, I, I have spread some awareness of diabetes. I'm sure yes. you have, Doug. People like to watch this show. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> probably rockers. They love rockers. <laughs> 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 yeah, they love rockers, so I think that's why they watch the show. But you know, so we know that how what diabetes is, you know, that it's not something that's contagious, but is it something that's hereditary? A really good question as well. So, um, so there are rare forms of diabetes that can be hereditary, but but we but the majority of diabetes um they run in families but there isn't any specific gene that's passed down from parent to child so mm. um they do run in families um especially type 2 diabetes um so there is a genetic component i would say but i would say the, the, the major things would be um you know environment diet lack of exercise so the things that we stress over and over and over yeah. you know but yes it, there is a, a propensity of of diabetes to run within families um, really rare, there's, there's diabetes called the monogenic form of diabetes, where it's passed along certain genes. But those are really, really rare forms, you know, so mm-hmm. pretty uncommon. So, yeah. yeah. So, so basically, we're just here being unhealthy and living unhealthy and causing ourselves unnecessary stress. Some of us, yes. And some of us can improve, you know, but that's, that's why, you know, we're, we're here to help, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Doc, if somebody, since you're a diabetologist, you yes. studied the field, if somebody wants to get in contact with you, how do they do? So where do you practice? Um, so, so I practice at, um, at a few different hospitals. So uh, St. Augustine Private Hospital, Southern Medical Clinic in San Fernando, sometimes at West Shore Medical. And I also work in the, uh, the public health system as well, but um, with COVID patients. So you can't really access me there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to access me there. You at know? all? Yes, no, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> But hopefully, if they have to, at least you'll be there to help them. Of course, of course, yes. All right, Doc, we have to leave it there. Well, thank you so much for being with us here this morning. You're most welcome. Dr. Chad Bissamba, they're talking to us. Diabetes, uh, World Diabetes Day will be celebrated on the 14th of November. They'll be having a webinar, but Andrew will be here with us next week to tell us some more. So stay with us. We have much more coming up in the program.